Traditionally in mid-October, Syracuse football fans are waiting for a court to lay on top of the gridiron. But in 2022, this is not the case. Number 18 Syracuse is 5-0 and and needs two wins to go bowling. The thick of the ACC schedule starts this week when number 15 NC State makes its way to the JMA Dome. How can Syracuse secure a win in front of a projected sellout crowd? Well, we've got that and everything you need to know on Q's Countdown. Let's go. Number 15, NC State, number 18, Syracuse. Where else would you rather be than inside the Citrus TV studio for Q's Countdown? With Chloe Smars and Braden Reed, I'm Joe Puccio. This weekend's marquee matchup inside the Dome features two ranked squads and one team that's undefeated. Now, if you're a fan of the Q's, you know all too well that it's SU who has the perfect record. A wise man once said you'd rather be above 500 than below 500, but perfect? It's turning heads for the first time in a while. It's the Orange's best start in 35 years. After the bye week, undefeated Syracuse is the fourth best scoring offense with nearly 40 points per game and have allowed an ACC best two touchdowns per contest. Chloe, this has been a dream start for the Cues. Yeah, you're right, Joe. It definitely has been, especially from what we saw last year. No one expected Syracuse to be ranked and to be undefeated going into week seven. At most, people had them winning four or three games, so it's a big turnaround for Syracuse. You kind of got to give some of that credit to Dino Babers, who was in the chopping seat this year. They didn't know if he was going to be the guy moving forward. Additionally, though, a lot of people are criticizing Syracuse for their strength of schedule. You can't really do much about that if, if you're Syracuse, and they have done, they have excelled with the teams that they have played in front of them, especially Purdue. They're a bowl contender team as well. Syracuse is looking good throughout five weeks. Pete, who's in front of you, absolutely. I got to give a lot of credit to this offense. It was a huge question mark coming into the season. You knew what you had with the defense. Defensive coordinator Tony White returning. Robert Anai, though, new, off new offensive coordinator. What is he going to be able to do with Garrett Schrader? Schrader has been one of the most efficient passers in all of college football this year. Looks completely different from a guy, like you said, we saw a year ago. Sean Tucker, still uber talented. Hasn't gotten the ball as much. Yards per carry down a little bit. I'd like to see his production go back up. But this offense, again, totally different from the one we saw a year ago. Be able to put up more points and really compete in some of these games and win them all. Well, Brandon, the offense has caught your eye, but what else has stood out to you through these first five games? Yeah, Ben Spector, friend of the show, said it best. <laughs> this team just finds ways to win games. They've done that five times so far this year, and that's really encouraging to see because this time last year, it was disappointing. The yeah. Syracuse team was in games, in games that they were the less talented team and were close but just couldn't get it done, right? FSU, Wake Forest, Clemson, those games come to mind. This time, though, they're winning those close games yep. against Purdue, Virginia. They're finding ways to eke out wins off to an undefeated st start so far this year. going to be a tough stretch as we get further into the season, but 5-0, you can't complain. Yeah, and I'm looking at Syracuse. This is the first ranked game in 21 years. That was before I was ever born, Braden. Back in 2001, Syracuse was ranked 22 and faced a 25-ranked Boston College. In that game, that quarterback, R.J. Anderson, he threw for almost 200 yards. And at running back, James Mungro ran for two touchdowns and 184 yards as well. Syracuse would actually go on to win that game and they would go on to be 10 and 3, win their bowl game. If history can repeat itself, Syracuse can get a win this weekend and can be 6 and 0 following this weekend. 6 and 0. That's just crazy to believe. <laughs> Look, it's the midway point of the season, and as we've hit on many times, this start has been all Syracuse fans could ask for. The question as we get to the second half of the season is can Syracuse maintain this level of success? Follow me to the wall. Let's break this down. Louisville, Yukon, Purdue, Virginia, and Wagner. Now, what do these teams have in common besides falling on the orange sword? Well, they're all outside of the top 25. So bear with me for a moment, but what's similar with NC State, Clemson, Notre Dame, Pittsburgh, and Wake Forest? Well, each team has either been in the AP poll at some point this season or are currently sitting pretty in the top 25. Oh yeah, it's also Syracuse's upcoming schedule. We know NC State is ranked 15th, but with Clemson at 4 and Wake Forest at 14, 18th ranked Syracuse is in for quite the push to bowl season. And I get it. I don't want to be a Debbie Downer. This 5-0 top 25 talk, it's special. But Syracuse head coach Dino Babers preps for the most difficult circumstances. 
This is 15 rounds heavyweight. It's going to be some slugs going out there. There's going to be some shots, and uh, you're going to get hit really, really hard, and how you handle that's going to affect the game, and it's going to be everybody that's out there on the football field. It will be a physical contest. We'll find out how physical it'll be on Saturday, but Braden, are you picking up what Dino's putting down? Kind of, a little bit, not really. It's just a <laughs> boxing match or a football game. 15 <laughs> rounds, it's gonna be Mike Tyson and Muhammad Ali out there in the Dome on Saturday. No, this is what Syracuse has been building towards all season long. You said it earlier, expectations really low coming into the season, but then you start to rattle off some wins. Wins against Louisville, big one against Purdue, Virginia, like we just talked about. This is why you play the lights are brightest now, top 25 matchup in the Dome. Suddenly all the expectations are really high. Syracuse, a chance to stamp their name into a legitimate team in the ACC and the entire country. Let's see what they're capable of doing. Yeah, exactly. And I'm, I'm kind of agreeing with Dino here. It is going to be a little bit of a dogfight. NC State's the best team that Syracuse has faced up until this point. A stat line that Syracuse fans are not going to like. Under Dino Babers, Syracuse is 2-6 and six following the bites. And that's not a good stat wow. line that you want to hear. Additionally, though, Dino Babers is going to have to do what he can do this week, especially Robert and I. The NC State defense is very talented. We talked about that before. He's going to have to come up with some sort of scheme that can really work in the play actions to be able to get Garrett Schrader's legs moving and Sean Tucker running. Potentially a dogfight in the Dome this weekend. All right, coming up on Q's Countdown, we take a deep dive into Syracuse's next opponent. What has NC State done up to this point? Which member of the pack can give the Orange some fits? Find out after these messages. You've messed up your son's haircut. Mom? Mm -hmm. Do you A, try to fix it? Like it never happened. B, work with what you've got. Or C, show solidarity. Thank you, babe. As a parent, there are no perfect answers. But you don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. We're back on Q's Countdown. I'm Joe Puccio with Chloe Smars and Brayden Reed. As Chloe said earlier, this Saturday, number 18 Syracuse plays in its first ranked game inside the Dome since 2001. This time it's against number 15, NC State. NC State has been one of the top teams in college football this season. The Wolfpack are paired with a dialed aerial attack and a stifling defense. That tandem has given NC State a 5-1 record with its only loss coming against number 5 Clemson. Chloe, times are good in upstate New York, but the same can be said down in Raleigh. Yeah, when you got a good offense and a good defense, you're going to have, you're going to be pretty happy. And I give a lot of that success to Dave Dorn, the head coach. He's added a lot of consistency to this team. And his time in NC State for the, since 2013, he's ranked in 69 total wins. That's second all time for NC State. Additionally, he's qualified for seven bowl games. He's made this ACC team be at the top of the ACC throughout these past few years, besides maybe in 2019. They've ranked top 25. They've ranked top 30 in both total offense and total defense. You can't really ask for much more than maybe an ACC championship title game or something. Ooh. But besides that, NC State has been a consistent team throughout these few years under Dave Dorn. Yeah, everyone wants to talk about the offense, how great Devin Leary has been. I have to give credit to this defense, though. They've been lights out so far this season. Give you some numbers. 15 in points per game allowed. 21st in passing yards against. 28th in rushing yards against. All of those top 30 in the country. This defense flies all over the field, led by their linebacker, Drake Thomas, four-year player for this team, heart and soul of this defense. They make life miserable for opposing quarterbacks, running backs, every position group on this team. Garrett Schrader, Sean Tucker, Robert and I, we talked about them, have had a lot of success so far this season. It's their first legitimate test against a really, really good defense at NC State. Going to be interesting to see how they respond. Yeah, you mentioned that defense in Drake Thomas. Look, they only missed five tackles last week. Five tackles. But here's the thing, when you play in the ACC, you play against some of the best teams in college football. NC State, obviously, among one of those top dogs. And Braden, two ACC games so far, and the results are a little bit mixed for the Wolfpack. Yeah, look, they played a really good Clemson team close, but even then, like a 10-point loss 
still isn't good. That's a double-digit loss, and I get it's down there in Death Valley. But you lose that game. You are, you'll also lose to FSU. We talked about it with Syracuse. They find ways to win games. Granted, some of these teams at NC State are playing are very, very good teams. I don't know if FSU is that good, though. You got the win against them, but not really convincing me that this Wolfpack team is super talented. You also beat the East Carolina Pirates by one. Look, I'm, a, I'm the biggest Pirates fan around. You need to beat them by more than that. Yeah, back to the FSU game last week. Their offense was okay. Now, granted, Devin Leary did go out, but besides that, their running game was mediocre. They, they should have played FSU a lot more harder than they did. We also have to take a look at that they rallied 17 0. That is quite impressive for NC State. But the defense stood up for NC State, obviously. Their defensive back, Jordan Travis, came up with a game winning INT to shut down Florida State in the second half. They didn't allow Florida State to score any points during that game as well. NC State's a solid team. They're going to have to be dangerous against Wake Forest team, who's the second best team. I need to see that game first to tell me a little bit more about NC State because to me, I still kind of can't figure out where they're at. Not only is NC State solid, but they're also a fun bunch. This is a battle between two of the top teams in the Atlantic. It's only October, but Chloe, this game could prove pivotal for December. Yeah, Syracuse really has to get through NC State if they even want a shot at being in the ACC title game or competing for the Atlantic. Sadly for Syracuse, NC State has their numbers. They've won 13 out of the past 15 games. If you're a Syracuse fan, you're not going to like that. Again, NC State, we keep talking about them. They're so good on defense. They have Drake Thomas. They have Isaiah Moore, who are going to stop the run. they got to be creative on offense. Garrett Schrader is going to have to put this team on his back, try to make some plays with his arm in order, for get, in order for them to get a win this week. Yeah, we've said it 100 times, but it's true. Syracuse's toughest test of the season. This is where you really prove yourself as a legitimate team in the country. And not just in the ACC, in the top 25 as well, really a chance for them to solidify themselves into these rankings, into the team maybe that could be playing in a big bowl game come December, like you yeah. said. Those New Year's Six Bowls, I don't know if they'll go that far, <laughs> but right, you want to be playing a Texas, right? One of these powerhouse programs, if you're Syracuse, to get your name back out there on the national level. Some recruits come in if you're playing in those kind of games. So this is the first step for that, right? You got to win yeah. this game or at least play them close to get yourself into that conversation going forward. You're right, Brayden. It's a tough test, but that might be a little bit easier on Saturday. NC State could be without QB1. In last week's game against Florida State, Devin Leary hurt his right shoulder after taking a hit. Head coach Dave Doran said this week in a press conference, there is no timeline for his rehab. Could be one week or six weeks. Coach Dearon is, quote, excited his season isn't over. Leary broke Phillip Rivers' program record for single-season passing touchdowns last year with 36. So far this year, the junior is fourth in the conference with four passing scores. If you're a fan of the pack, you can breathe a sigh of relief that one of the program's all-time greats will be back this season. For Orange fans, there's a strong chance Leary won't suit up in the dome. So who's lining up under center if it's not Leary? It's Jack Chambers. Jack Chambers, sorry. NC State's backup is a walk-on. Yeah, that's right. Chambers is enrolled, enrolled at the university in May. Chloe, this is the 15th best team in the land and could insert a walk-on against Syracuse. Well, they're going to have to insert the walk-on here, Joe, because there's really no other option at quarterback. Now, I'm going to give Devin Chambers a little bit of a leeway here. Sorry, Jack Chambers will take that back. He is a great running game. We saw it from his alma mater, Charleston Southern. Have you ever heard of that school? I haven't. But he ran for 1,300 yards there. And something about this NC State offense is that they run a little bit more RPOs, which is something that Devin Leary can't – he's not the best runner. He was a dominant thrower. So maybe Jack Chambers can get a little bit more involved in the run game, make this offense a little bit more expansive. I'm going to give him the benefit of a doubt, but it's going to be very hard for Chambers against the mob defense. Chambers coming from Charleston Southern, and you said it, he's a runner, but not, mu not much of a passer. He wasn't even that good of a passer or in the FCS either. Only a 55% completion percentage last year. 17 touchdowns to 10 picks. That does not scare Garrett Williams. <laughs> that does not scare Deuce Chestnut or this defense as a whole. But you said it, the running ability could give Syracuse some trouble. If you're prepping for Devin Leary, you play Malik Cunningham in week one of Louisville, maybe a similar player there with that rushing ability. But this defensive line, linebackers, you know you're going to have the passing game cover. He doesn't really have that ability. But look for him to break out of the pocket, make some plays with his legs. That's where you're really going to need to be sure. Rudy was a pretty good movie, but I, I don't think NC State's going to want to play out this plot this weekend against Syracuse. Braden, if Devin Leary is actually out for this Saturday, it creates quite the interesting matchup. Yeah, it really did for the group I just talked about. That front seven, the linebackers, the defensive line, 
If Leary doesn't play in this game, you're not going to have to worry about that pass coverage. You're able to get after it in the run game and the pass rush. Michael Jones, Marlo Wax love to do that. They're not just coverage guys. They play all over the field, shoot through those gaps. Caleb Okachuk will, a huge contributor on this defensive line, leads the team in sacks this year. Another same thing, right? You're able to get after him through the defensive line. Give Jamer some trouble in the pocket. We know he can't really throw the ball that well. You're going to have to keep him as he gets outside of the pocket, but this front seven could have a huge day. Yeah, and I'm looking at the NC State defense versus Robert Anai. This is going to be Robert Anai's hardest task all season. We keep talking about it, but the NC State defense is nasty. I'm going to highlight two guys in the linebacker position. Isaiah Moore is the NC State's highest graded run defender. He has six and a half tackles for loss. In addition, we also have Drake Thomas. He is named ACC Linebacker of the Week last week for good reasons. 14 total tackles against FSU. He also is just a true sideline to sideline type of guy. He's all gas, no breaks. So if you're Robert and I, what are you going to do here? And oddly enough, you're going to give the ball to Garrett Schrader and let him run the ball. Utilize RPO style offenses and also maybe keep him on the quarterback keeper. The NC State defense has allowed 780 yards rushing, but 50% of those are coming from the quarterback positions. So give it to Garrett, give it to Garrett, Garrett Schrader, and also feed John Tucker so that he can do what he does best. The offensive line is going to have to help him out there in order for Rob and I to be successful this week. Yeah, that's right. Syracuse offense has a lot going for it. NC State, not so much. Regardless of who's under center, whether it's Devin Leary, Jack Chambers, heck, even if it's Braden Reed, none of those players can maximize their potential if they have a weak offensive line in front of them, especially Braden Reed. As Chloe and Braden break down, NC State's offense has been abysmal this season. Yeah, Joe, this NC State offensive line is by far the weakest part of this offense, and we saw it last week against FSU, and we're going to see it here against Clemson in this blitz. So we have Barrett Cooper coming off the edge. He's the outside linebacker here. It's a very obvious blitz, yet this wing on NC State is supposed to chip block him, but he does an awful job doing that. He's going to run straight into Devin Leary. That one got to hurt, Braden. And additionally, though, the offensive line for NC State, it was five against three. So there's some serious miscommunication there as well. They did not pick up any block. There should have been communication maybe by even Devin Leary at the line mm -hmm. to change the blocking scheme a little bit. That was not done. It really hurt Devin Leary on that one. Yeah, that one had to hurt. The one <laughs> hits keep piling up for him. That one, few against Clemson, the few against FSU yep. where he ultimately got hurt. This NC State offensive line flat out has not been good, like you said, Chloe. They've given up the most sacks in the country tied for that lead, that is. And that continued on the save drive against Clemson. Two downs later, obvious passing situation here, third and 18. Clemson only rushes three this time. NC State, a double's fine. Clemson has some really talented guys mm -hmm. on that defensive line. Left guard doesn't block anybody, though. That's going to be an issue. This defensive end beats his man, eventually ends up in a Devin Leary sack. We've talked about it already. These hits keep piling up yep. for Devin Leary. The Syracuse defensive line as well, we know, can get after the passer they've been doing all year. Might be a backup quarterback for the Wolfpack as well. So NC State really going to have their hands full with the orange defensive line. Could be a huge day for them to rack up some sack totals. The Wolfpack need Iki Aquanu so bad. Let's step aside for a moment here on Q's Countdown. But when we return, Chloe and Braden pull out their phones and go to work in the Bird app. Let's play Who's Burner after this. When I was in foster care, I never knew when I would have to move. So I always had my suitcase ready to go. Then one day I was adopted. My new parents opened their hearts and home to me. My parents cook my favorite breakfast for me every morning. My parents take me on trips I never thought I would go on. They gave me a home and an even better reason to use that suitcase. My parents aren't perfect, but they're perfect for me.
the Twitter fingers are out. That means one thing on Q's Countdown. It's time for Who's Burner? Joe Puccio, Chloe Smars, Braden Reed. Now, guys, I have a few tweets generated on my piece of paper here, <laughs> and we'll show them on the screen. I wish they were actually real, but I will recite them for you, and all you have to do is tell me who sent these tweets out. All right, so without further ado, let's get right into it. Let's get to some scrolling here. The first Twitter fingers, uh, first tweet actually comes out from. What does the tweet say, Joe? You gotta tell us. I'm just trying to think of it off the top of my head. Look, it says, I can't believe I had to play in the second half against Wagner. I could have suffered a serious injury. My future is too bright to be playing in these meaningless games at meaningless times. Guys, who put this tweet out? I think it was Garrett Schrader. Garrett Schrader and Sean Tucker were both in a game at this point. Neither of them should have been. They both it, both scarily avoided injury in that game. It's Wagner. No reason for either of those two guys to be out there. The offense goes as the quarterback goes, and I've been saying it all show. Schrader has been so impressive so far this season. You need him out there on that field. He absolutely cannot go down because Sean Tucker was able to still play up to a really high level last year, even if the offense wasn't that great. You need Garrett Schrader there, not getting injured. Sit him down for a game like that. Well, oddly enough, uh, Sean Tucker did play in that second half, and uh, he did get hurt. Mm. So, uh, Dino Babers, what are you doing? There's a lot of questions I have here. I don't know, maybe give him a little bit of a rest or something. But in the first half, Sean Tucker did everything he could. He ran for 224 yards and two touchdowns. Give him a break. And also, you want to see what you have in your running back group after Sean Tucker leaves. When Sean Tucker went down the opening series, I guarantee you, Dino Babers is holding his breath and hoping that it wasn't as big of a deal as it was. But that was probably the worst coaching move from Dino Babers this season. Just take Sean Tucker out of the game at that point. So Dino Babers, he's got his phone working. I've got mine working too. A little bit late on that scroll here. But let's <laughs> next up on the timeline, we got this one. Coach needs to go my way more. Sean and Arande get all the love, but I deserve a little more. Oh, a little selfish here. My <laughs> skills would make the offense tick. Who, who tweeted this one? We'll start with you, Brandon. I think it was LaQuinn Allen, and you mentioned it, Chloe. Sean Tucker goes out of the game. Who are you going to see at running back? It's LaQuinn. He's only 18 years old, born in 04, which as an 01 person, <laughs> you're insane to me that an 04 was playing football at the college level at this point. But true freshman has shown some pretty incredible ability as a receiving back. Not as built, not as compact as Sean Tucker is. Not a guy you're going to run between the tackles, but can make some run some routes out in the flat, those angle routes, those option routes. I want to see that incorporated into this offense. There's already so much new this year, but you're getting into the brunt of your schedule. You're going to have to change up the scheme a little bit. LaQuinn could be that receiving back for you that Sean Tucker, as great as he is, just doesn't really have that ability or hasn't shown it yet so far. I'm going to take Devon Cooper here. He's a slot receiver here for Syracuse. And I just think the way the offense has been working this year, they don't really use that mid-range game. But I think Devon Cooper could do that. He has some great hands. He's able to stretch a field also like an Aronde Gatson. I think he just kind of falls in the depth chart there. But additionally, why don't you run him on some slant routes, some dig routes, get him going. And also, though, he has the best numbers on the team, oddly enough, for the wideout group, but he hasn't had a breakout performance. We also, last time you heard Braden talking about motion in this offense, and Devon Cooper was the main guy to do that in UConn and in the Wagner game to get Aronde Gatson open. Why not give him the ball more? Spread the love a little bit. Well, they always talk about Aronde Gatson being a solid weapon, but Devon Cooper, why not? Let's see him a little bit this Saturday. <laughs> All right, we got one more tweet here. This is from at Mobcast Official. I don't think this is a burn. I think this might be an actual tweet <laughs> from Mobcast Official. But they say, we need to blitz more. All right, fitting. The mob is a family, and we do our best when we're all together. Blitzing equals more of the mob, equals more sacks, which equals more wins. Checks and, that, out. and that's pretty simple. <laughs> Chloe, let's hear it. Who's burning? I'm going Marlo Wax. He's kind of like the king of the mob, if you want to call it. Additionally, though, he just like is a guy that likes to get after the quarterback, along with Michael Jones. He has two and a half sacks on the year, seven sacks last year. And I think also just blitzing more in this defense allows for Garrett Williams and do Chestnut in the back end to do what they do best. I also just, I love Marlo Wax. He does everything right. And on the team, I were all 13 total sacks in the year. Why not add up to that? I'm going to go another member of the mob, oh, Caleb wow. Okachufu, a big fan of his. He's on fan. here on this TV show. <laughs> Part of that inexperienced defensive line group coming into the season, a lot of question marks. They graduated a lot of seniors. They left the team. Who was going to step up? And that was Caleb Okachuku at this point in the year. Leads the team in sacks. Benefits from the blitzing linebackers like Marlo Wax, Michael Jones. But you just have a one-on-one -on -one matchup this year if you're Caleb Okachuku. Really make some things happen. Get after the quarterback. And that offensive line, as we talked about earlier for NC State, mm -hmm. they're going to have a lot of problems this yep. week. All right, friends, we're running out of time here on Q's Countdown. We'll take a look at the ACC and give our predictions for this Saturday's contest. More of us three after this.
house party fouls are pretty dumb. But if you decide to drink and drive underage, you could lose your license and your freedom. Underage drinking and driving, the ultimate party foul. We're wrapping things up here on Q's Countdown. That's Chloe Smarts. That's Braden Reed. I'm Joe Puccio. We're at the halfway point of the season. So let's take a look at the ACC. And Chloe, just like in years past, unlike our friend of the show, Ethan Frank, mm -hmm. the ACC is sitting at the grown-ups table here in college football. Yeah, and it's, I mean, you got to look at Clemson. Obviously, they're ranked number four in the nation. And they're kind of, it's their, it's their league to lose here. They have everything, right? They have a Heisman candidate quarterback. They also have a great defense. And they got Dabo Sweeney, who's one of the best coaches in the ACC. Their defense is fast and furious. I mean, I don't really see anyone catching up to Clemson. Do you, Brayden? No, not at all. Clemson, arguably the best defense in the entire country. I don't want to say it feels like a bronze medal game in the dome, but that kind of is what it feels like, yeah. right? Clemson all the way up, the, up, up there at the top. I don't see anyone catching them. Wake Forest, I think, might be the second best team in this entire conference. Syracuse and NC State, that's just, again, the bronze medal game. It feels like the winner of this game is likely set to finish third in the conference. I don't think Syracuse beats them as they play later on this season, but yeah, Syracuse, really tough time, I think, gonna climb, to climb all the way up those standings. And look at those standings, too, right? Four ACC Atlantic teams in the top 25, and right now there's only one over there fight, in the yeah. Coastal. <laughs> so maybe whoever wins the Atlantic comes away as the ACC champion, and maybe college football playoff, too. Who knows? <laughs> all right, so these two teams behind us, Syracuse and NC State, some of the best teams in the Atlantic, they square off on Saturday. It's time for everyone's favorite segment, predictions. Hey, Chloe. What do you got? I got 2017 Syracuse. They're playing at home. I really like the mob of Syracuse. I also, I don't really know the situation with Devin Leary. I think if maybe he was playing, my prediction would go a little bit different. But I really like the mob to stack up against, we think, Jack Chambers at quarterback. And I think Garrett Schrader is going to do a lot with his legs this game. And Sean Tucker, he's going to have decent, maybe break 100 yards. Yeah, I'm going to go Syracuse winning this one 13-9. I think it's going to be a huge defensive battle in this one. I know Syracuse has been putting up a lot of points all this year. I know you guys think they're going to put up a lot of points. But... <laughs> I see this as a huge litmus test for the Syracuse defense. We know how good the Wolfpack have been on defense all year. Garrett Schrader, Sean Tucker, really going to have their hands full. Going to be a defensive battle the entire time. Syracuse obviously facing the backup quarterback and have a bit easier of a time. Syracuse offense going to need to do a lot more. I don't know if they do. They do enough. I don't know if they're <laughs> going to do a lot, though. So, Braden, he's taking the under. Chloe's got 20-17, to 17, but what up, what's up with Andre Schmidt? I'm not giving Why? him. Whatever. I'm giving him the extra point. Syracuse <laughs> wins 21-17 to 17 and improves to 6-0 and 0 on the season. That just about does it for Q's Countdown. Be sure to check us out at Citrus TV, TV Sports on Twitter for live game coverage on Saturday. And tune in to Orange Press Pass at 8.30 for your post-game needs. For Chloe Smars, Braden Reed, and our executive producer, Colin Bach, I'm Joe Puccio. Enjoy the game.